Welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, and to another episode of my series, Free on Facebook, a series of videos in which I find things for free and I show you how to repair them, repurpose them, or recycle them in another manner. In this video, I got this hot point washing machine that's not draining. So I'm gonna show you five reasons why this may be occurring. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you, you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. As of this video, which is being shot at the end of 2023, I have around 20,000 subscribers, which is a great accomplishment for me. However, my goal is to get to 100,000, so if you could hit the subscribe sign, it would be a great help. So here's the washer in question. It's a hot point washing machine. I don't have too many videos on hot point washing machines, but just so you know, that this washing machine is pretty much exactly the same as any sort of belt driven GE washer because GE is a manufacturer of hot point. Um, for this particular machine, that is the model number right there. As you can see, it's made by GE. And I have a lot of repair videos on belt driven GE washing machines. So if you have any other issues, make sure you check out my channel for those. And if you're curious to see what a belt driven machine looks like or what qualifies as a belt driven machine, all you have to do is go down, come down here, kind of tip it to its side and see that black belt cover right there. If it's got that, that means it's a belt driven washing machine. So this video will be applicable to that. And I'm going to cover five reasons why your hot point or GE washing machine is not draining. Uh, this could be either it's completely not draining or like this one where um, it's partially draining and it's just leaving the clothes really soaked. So let's get to it. So the very first thing to do is to check to see if there's any sort of clog in the system. And the first thing you want to check is to see if there's a clog in the drain hose. So all you have to do is undo this clip, get a pliers, push it back, and you'll be able to pull this right out and see if there's a clog in this pipe right here because that will uh, pretty much cause your uh, washer to back up. You undo this and a whole bunch of water gushes out and that most likely means that this right here is a clog in there or it's where you actually put this into um, on the standpipe in your house, there's a clog in actually the drain of the house, which can happen as well. So with the main drain pipe removed, we're gonna tip the washer on its back and inspect the this hose right here, which is the outlet to the drain pump, because that can also be clogged. All right, so the second hose we're gonna be inspecting, as I mentioned, is this one right here. And to undo that one, it's very similar to the main drain hose, which is gonna get this clip, push it down. There's also a screw on the other side if you wanna take this completely out, but um, we're not, that's not necessarily necessity. And that's off. And with that off, it's very easy to see um, if there's a clog in here because you can see all the way to the other side. But like I said, there's a screw on the back side of this panel so you can remove this completely and inspect it that way as well. So if you take this off and you notice the whole bunch of water that comes out, that could mean that there's a clog in the short pipe right here. All right, so that's the main, that's the first reason, which is a clog in the drain pipes, whether that's the main one that goes into the standpipe in your house or the outlet of the drain pump. The second reason your hot point or belt driven um, GE washer isn't draining is a clog in the pump. So we'll take a look at that next. All right, so to check the pump for a clog, all we need is a 3 8 inch nut driver, and we're gonna be undoing three bolts. One, two, and the third one is actually underneath right here. All 
Right, so with the drain pump removed, you can inspect the inlet side, which is right here, and both the outlet side as well. And sometimes there'll be some small article of clothing like uh, baby socks that can get stuck on the inlet and that'll just jam up the pump, which is very common. I've also kind of seen them stuck at the inlet or the outlet of the tub as well. So that's uh, two common points to check here, inlet and outlet of the drain pump. And that'll verify that your, um, at least your drain pump is not clogged up. So that's the second reason. And so after that, if you verify that, you can just bolt this back on. All right, so I bolted on the drain pump uh, back onto the washer, but we're not completely done with it yet because the drain pump can also fail, but we'll come back to testing that in the next step because I wanted to cover um, another more common reason why your washing machine is not draining, and that's the issue with the belt. Now, a belt issue won't necessarily lead to your washing machine being filled with water, but it'll lead to your clothes being completely saturated with water. So it'll look like it's not draining, but um, it is a very common issue, so I wanted to cover that before um, going into the drain pump further. So if your washing machine looks like it's not draining and your clothes are saturated, all you need to do is remove, come to reason number three, I should say, and, which is an issue with the belt. So to get to that, remove the belt cover. So there's just three bolts right here. One, two, and the third one's on the bottom. And that'll give us access to the belt and see what's going on. Look at that. As soon as we took the cover off, we see that the belt is not attached to the motor or the pulley here. It just comes, came off. It's also frayed up a little bit, so I'm going to actually replace this belt. And this is actually a very common issue on these washers. Um, if this is the issue, obviously, you know, you're, you're, it'll drain the water, but then the clothes will be very saturated. Um, the belts are available online for like 10 bucks. And, uh, if you have this washer, I kind of recommend having one on hand anyways. And just so you know that this, um, the third screw that holds on the cover also has a ground on it. So make sure you put that uh, bolt through the ground, then uh, tighten it back up when you put it back there. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty much the motor pulley. This is the transmission pulley. If the belt is broken or if it's come off, then obviously the drum won't spin and your clothes are going to stay wet. So that's the, the third biggest reason why your clothes aren't draining properly is an issue with the belt, whether it's broken or it's just kind of slipped off in this case, but I will uh, go ahead and replace this with a new belt because it is frayed. All right, so I kind of suspected it was the belt because there was no, there was no water in the tub, uh, but uh, that's not always the case, so that's why we'll move on to actually um, the fourth reason which is a failed drain pump. Now a drain pump can fail for two reasons. One is electronically failed, meaning there's a short in the drain pump windings, or it's failed due to a mechanical reason. So it's kind of more difficult to test for mechanical failure, so what we'll do is kind of a process by elimination, we'll test this for um, electronically to make sure that the windings are okay. If they are, um, then we can deduce that uh, once you've done all the other steps that it's indeed a mechanical failure in the pump um, because like I said, it's a little bit difficult to tell whether the propeller inside there is working properly or if it's some sort of other um, issue mechanically with the pump. Um, so we'll kind of do that by process of elimination. Best way to test this mechanically is actually just to go ahead and undo this clip right here and it's just pushing this part in and then pulling out these ones are a little stiff sometimes but there we go and then undoing it from uh, then just redo undoing the three bolts that we took off initially as well so that will allow us to pull the drain pump out and we can test it um, in a more comfortable position. All 
All right, so to test this um, electronically, it's very simple. All you have to do is get a multimeter. Um, get a multimeter right here and uh, put it in resistance mode. I have it here in uh, auto resistance. Put it right there and uh, we'll select the auto feature. And uh, just measure the resistance of the windings. So they should be between 10 to 30 ohms of resistance. And just stick the probes in any which direction um, into these tabs right here. And let's see what the resistance is. Um, so we're getting resistance of 25.3 ohms. So which tells us that at least the windings in here are good and the uh, pump's not shorted out or burned up or anything like that but that doesn't necessarily mean that the pump is good itself i mean it's electronically good and it's probably actually more likely to fail mechanically than it is electronically so if you've come to this point and you've all the other things have checked out it's electronically good and there's no clogs and the pump's not clogged um, then it could highly likely that this is a mechanical failure now, I don't have a really good method for testing it mechanically, aside from what, what, one thing I do like to do is test the propeller there. Um, if you can see it on the inlet side right there, uh, you can stick your finger down there and you should get resistance as you turn it clockwise, then it should click. Resistance, then click. Um, if it does not, then there's an issue with the, pro uh, the propeller that's in there. Um, that's, a, that's one mechanical failure that could be wrong with it, but there could also be something else as well. And honestly, if you come to this point, um, this pump is like 35 bucks on Amazon. So it, it's maybe just better just to go ahead and to, uh, try to swap in a new pump and see if that resolves the issue. Because um, after this, the only um, issue is uh, the fifth issue, which is um, a bad control board. And uh, that's a very expensive repair. And... You, you probably not. It's probably not even be worth it to do it on this um, washing machine. Uh, a control board, I think, it runs around two hundred bucks. This whole machine altogether, brand new, is four hundred. So that's not gonna make sense. So the fifth reason um, is a bad control board, um, which is which can happen on this machine because they have a lot of control board issues. But so which is gonna be getting to that fifth reason by process of elimination by eliminating all of the other things but um, a quick thing you could test for is um, uh, what I was talking about is you can stick your finger in here and see if it rotate then click so it's kind of hard to show with my finger in there but it rotates well and then is an audible click um, it's very subtle but it's a it'll just click into place that tells us that at least the propeller portion is okay. If, if you rotate it and there's no click, um, uh, if it rotates too freely, then um, it's an issue, mechanical issue with it. So that's just one mechanical test that I kind of do is stick my finger in there and see if I get resistance, then a click as I rotate it clockwise. So that is pretty much the top five reasons why you're hot point or belt driven GE washer machine is not spinning. So one, there's a clog in the drainage system. Two, there's a clog in the pump. Three, there's an issue with the belt, whether it's broken or it's slipped off. Four, it is an issue with the drain pump, whether it's an electrical issue or mechanical failure of the drain pump. And fifth, by process of elimination, is that the control board is bad. I know I didn't demonstrate how to replace the belt because I don't have a new belt on hand, but I can just use this old belt just for a quick demonstration. Uh, it's really easy. All you have to do is put the belt on the motor pulley first, then slip it over the transmission pulley. Just like that. After you slip it over, you give it a couple of turns and you know you're good. But like I said, that's an old frayed up belt. I'm gonna take off and put a new one on. So if you find this video to be helpful, make sure you hit the thumbs up sign.